Up next, we have Ty Loft. Ty is a science, technology, and international affairs major and Portuguese minor from Marin County, California. During his time on the hilltop, he has been involved as an outdoor education guide, a member of the Georgetown University rock climbing team, a teaching assistant in the biology department, and a violinist in the university orchestra. He plans to spend this summer as a Georgetown Impact Fellow in the Philippines, where he will work with resorts to improve their sustainable tourism practices. And he plans to spend the fall applying to real jobs. Please welcome Ty Loft. In my first week at Georgetown, I started learning two new languages, Portuguese and rock climber. Now, Portuguese was the easier of the two. I'd taken Chinese in high school, so I figured I knew how to learn a language. There were textbooks, there were knowledgeable professors, there was the Portuguese department coffee hour every Thursday. I had classmates, soon to be friends, with whom I could practice the language's strange nasal sounds over lunch. Um, we could get coffee together, right? The process basically, in other words, was institutionalized. But learning rock climber, that was chaos. Um, I joined the rock climbing team on a win because the leader of my freshman pre-orientation program, who's here today actually, happened to be one of its nine members. The team had only been founded about two years before, so it was still super small. So when he asked me if I wanted to go climbing with him a couple weeks into freshman year, I thought to myself, well, I'm a freshman, I don't have anything else to do. Um, plus, the last time I went rock climbing at my friend Nathan's fifth grade birthday, I'd been pretty good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so why not, right? Well, I didn't anticipate the language barrier. So I rolled up to the gym the first time, and I see the leader of my pre-orientation program. I go up to him, and it seemed like the first thing out of his mouth was, Ty, you've climbed before, right? Do you lead? Lead what? I mean, I'd certainly written that I was a leader on my college applications, <laughs> but I was not prepared to lead anything related to climbing. He must have seen my confused freshman expression. I'd had lots of time to practice it by that point because he quickly clarified, oh, leading's the kind of climbing where you take the rope up with you so you fall farther. <laughs> no, I don't do that, definitely not. <laughs> um, but great, right, I was out of the woods. I hadn't made a fool of myself through my lack of rock climbing lingo. Only it turned out that leading was actually just the beginning because when I got on my first climb, it seemed like this steady stream of cryptic jargon came rolling on me from my new teammates. It was like, Ty, it's easy, right? You just traverse out left on the undercling, and then you mantle up over the roof, you stick a heel hook on the in-cut sloper, then double down into the monster crimper, and it's jugs to the top. I was like, I didn't understand any of it. I was in over my head. Um, fortunately, the team started throwing me life rafts. I started receiving Facebook messages from the upperclassmen on the team, inviting me to uh, rock climbing movie nights, and rock climbing potlucks, and rock climbing dance parties. It didn't matter that I was a freshman, that I'd never really been climbing before, that I didn't know what a heel hook was. And that's the great thing about Georgetown. Because the school doesn't have much Greek life, every club, every sports team becomes a community. The rock climbing team became mine. The upperclassmen on the team became my mentors who helped me navigate those first few hectic months on the hilltop. While the other freshmen on the team became my closest friends, my future roommates, my current roommates today. So you can imagine in January, I was thrilled when some of the team members invited me to go out climbing with them in Red Rocks, Nevada over spring break. And there I was, just six months after climbing for the first time, uh, scaling these beautiful cliffs of red rock in the middle of the desert surrounded by friends and cacti. Um, it was an experience I never thought I'd have when I first arrived at Georgetown. It was incredible. But back on campus, academics kept rolling along. And suddenly it was time to study abroad. So I went to Brazil and I improved my Portuguese there and then I came back to, the, to Georgetown. And then it was time to start thinking about writing a thesis. And I realized people speak Portuguese in other countries too, not just Brazil, people speak Portuguese in Mozambique. Um, and before I knew it, I was driving alone through Mozambique's national parks through the most beautiful areas in the country, um, researching their post-Civil War recoveries for my thesis, fully funded by Georgetown. And that's when my relative lack of Portuguese like my lack of rock climber three years before got me in over my head. You see, a miscommunication in Portuguese caused me to very wrongly believe I could drive down this very sandy road to a beach in the park in which I was doing research. And I couldn't. And I was stuck, alone, at dusk, in sand, four miles from the nearest ranger station in the Maputo Elephant Reserve. 
Now you have to understand, Maputo Elephant Reserve is famous for having the meanest elephants in Africa. <laughs> um, they survived the Civil War by learning to attack the soldiers that were poaching them. <laughs> They've been diagnosed by the world's foremost elephant psychologist, and I know it's wild that that's someone's job. Um, <laughs> But anyway, they've been diagnosed by that person, Joyce Poole, as having PTSD, as having post-traumatic stress disorder from like, their experience in the war. Uh, apparently, they charge pedestrians on site. And here I was, literally stuck in the middle of their world, thinking to myself, oh my god, I'm going to be in the New York Times post-mortem. There's going to be this article that reads, Georgetown, on poorly con Georgetown undergraduate on poorly conceived research project squashed by elephant. <laughs> You know, Department of Education investigating. <laughs> Crap. Um, but I was lucky, and I missed the elephant herds as I walked those four miles back to my car, or to the ranger station. Those are probably the scariest four miles I've ever walked. Um, and now my Portuguese came in handy because I befriended the warden as he helped pull my car out of the sand with his winch. Um, we got to talking in Portuguese, and he invited me to interview him over dinner, and he was fascinating. But not only that, he had connections to basically every conservationist in Mozambique, all the people I needed to talk to for my thesis. And suddenly, my entrapment in the sand became the gateway into the most rewarding, uh, exciting, character-building 10 weeks in my life. Um, my summer in Mozambique shaped my values and confirmed that I want to pursue a career in conservation. So sometimes it pays to get stuck, get in over your head. Now, don't get me wrong. Portuguese and rock climber were not the only languages I tried to pick up in my four years at Georgetown. There were lots of others I sampled that didn't stick. I spent a semester in a lab trying to learn lab speak, and researching butterflies. That didn't stick. I joined an intramural soccer team one semester and tried after failing in kindergarten and failing in fifth grade and failing in eighth grade to become a decent soccer player. That didn't stick. I spent a semester on Capitol Hill interning for my congressman and trying to learn bureaucracy and the dialect of bureaucracy spoken in DC, gridlock. Um, that didn't stick either. But by immersing myself over and over again in Georgetown's languages, I found a few that did stick, and those are the, what have shaped my time on the hilltop. It's those experiences, standing at the base of a cliff in Red Rocks, Nevada, um, yelling at my friend, just Gaston to the sloper out left, or sitting down in Mozambique's flagship national park to interview the warden with the Portuguese I learned in Georgetown's classrooms. It's those experiences that have made my time fascinating and inspiring and fun. So when you arrive at whichever school you choose in the fall, and I sincerely hope it's Georgetown, I advise you to immerse yourself in a new language. You don't have to join the rock climbing team. You don't have to enroll in Portuguese classes, although you can. But I hope that you commit fully to an activity or to an interest you've never tried before. Get in over your head. I don't think you'll regret it. Thank you.